works. So why would a retiring owner do this? Um, well, first thing, it creates a legacy, enables the business to continue. That's often very attractive. Retiring owner can realize the value that they've built up. Um, usually that's extremely important. Employees are often felt to be the most natural next owners. It's often the employees that really understand what does make the business tick. So there's a kind of logic to them taking over the ownership. Employee ownership makes the business very well positioned to enjoy further growth. Um, this does allow time for management succession because it's nearly always possible for the existing owners to continue being involved in uh, the management of the company until they've got a new management team to, uh, to take over. Um, and there's no capital gains tax. Now I would say, don't ever do this for tax reasons only. You've got to think it's the right thing for your company. Um, but if you do think it's the right thing, then of course the ability to pay 0% capital gains tax is going to be um, a little bit of icing on the cake. What are the benefits for the company? Uh, well, it's really all about maximizing employee engagement and achieving stronger performance, creating a strong platform for further growth. So this very much isn't about the owners jumping ship, leaving the company with the employees, um, and it might just carry on as it was, or it might just gradually decline. The idea is very much that you've got a really strong platform for further growth, um, taking the ownership into the next generation. Um, and uh, I think that's a very important element as far as the company's concerned. What about the employees? Well, sustainable ownership structure, this, this can be something that's there for the long term. Um, greater engagement, because if you're the owner, a co-owner, then there's a real reason for being engaged in how the company's performing, how well it's performing, or how badly it's performing. Why is it performing so badly? Often, often the answer to that question, to a large extent, lies with the employees. If you can tease out that information, that can help solve a lot of problems. Um, and of course then, once the owners have been paid off, then profits go or can go to the employees after retaining what you need for reinvestment and working capital. Um, also, for the employees, if they then become individual share owners, they can get dividends um, and they can benefit from capital growth. When is it most suitable? Um, well, if you're confident in your company that it's, your business is well attuned to employee ownership, you think it will work well, then that's a big tick. Um, if to you it looks like the best succession solution compared with the alternatives, if there are alternatives, then that's another big tick. Um, also, it's important to get management support as well. So, um, assuming you've got that, you've got three big ticks. Um, now, it won't be suitable for every company. Some companies will, be, will believe that um, it's going to be really difficult to get sufficient levels of employee engagement. Um, or some com company owners might say, I really love the tax reliefs. I just want to get out. I don't care about all the other things. In that situation, I would say, I'm not sure if this is the right solution for you, actually. You've got to really believe it's the right thing for your company moving forward. So that takes us neatly on to when is it less suitable? Um, doing it mainly or purely for tax reasons, not so good. Um, if there's insufficient cash, present and future, to fund the purchase price, then that's going to be a challenge as far as the selling shareholders are concerned. Um, also, if you um, can't get the support of your management team, then that um, could be a bit of a barrier as well. Um, I would say, well, maybe in that situation, if you really despite that, still think it's the right solution, then you might want to think about making some changes to the management team.